Since I started game development, my workflow and the tools that I use have changed quite a few times. But at the start of 2024, I completely switched to Linux. And due to that, I lost most of my programs that I used on Windows because they were not available on Linux. So I went on and searched for some softwares that worked for me. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing those with you. Maybe they'll work for you as well. So let's start with the most important software first, which is the game engine. If you have seen my other videos, you can easily tell that the game engine I use mainly is Godot. I have used it for almost 3 years to create many games and the overall experience is great. Godot is completely free and open source and it's so beginner friendly that everyone can learn it. Trust me, if I can learn it, anybody can. Moving on the list, the second important thing for a game in my opinion is its art. Since I started making video games, I have been creating 2D games mostly and the art style I used from the beginning is vector art. To make my assets, I have used quite a few programs. At first, I used to use Affinity Designer but after deciding to find an open source alternative, I found out about Inkscape and I quickly fell in love with it. I have been using Inkscape ever since I discovered it to make 2D art for my games and it's incredibly good and it's only getting better. As I told earlier, I have been making 2D games mostly since I started making games. But after me and my friend started to work on our first commercial game in Godot, I decided to learn more about 3D game development to get the hang of it. The biggest thing I used to fear was creating 3D models. I was really scared of making them myself. But recently, I have been getting into 3D modeling and the software that I have been using to make 3D models is Blender. Just like Godot and Inkscape, Blender is completely free and open source and now after using Blender for almost 2 months, I think 3D modeling is really fun once you get the hang of it and I'm enjoying working with Blender. An IDE is also an essential tool for a game dev. It is where a game dev will spend most of their time when making a game. As I mostly make games in GDScript, which is Godot's own programming language, I just use the built-in code editor of Godot which works really well for me. It is tightly integrated with the engine and it feels like a complete IDE. But when I have to code in other languages like C Sharp, C++, ATC, I use VS Codium, which is a fork of Microsoft's Visual Studio Code. But why don't I just use the Visual Studio Code from Microsoft? Well, the reason is that it uses less resources and the telemetry is disabled in it. I don't really care about that, but having a lightweight and fast code editor is pretty great. Plus, it has its own set of extensions, which is pretty cool. There is no doubt that sound is the most important part of a game. A game without sound is like a bread without butter or jam. And making sound effects is the most fun thing in game dev, at least for me. And it gets even more fun if you get a software that helps you make sounds easily. Ever since I learned sound designing, I have been using only one program to make sound effects for my games, which is Audacity. Audacity provides a lot of tools to edit sounds and turn them into polished sound effects. In my opinion, Audacity is a really cool software and it's free and open source as well. The second thing in sound which makes the game interesting and fun to play is its music. A boring game can be turned into a cool game if it has a good music. I have been making music for my games for quite a long time now and for that I have been using FL Studio which is a pretty good DAW. And the good thing is it also works great in Linux using Wine which is great as I really enjoy making music in FL Studio and I don't find that enjoyment in other softwares. And also the free trial of FL Studio is pretty amazing. Basically you can do everything except reopening your safe projects which is fine. Other than FL Studio I am also looking into some other force alternatives like LMMS which is the best force art to FL Studio and there's also Ardor which I think is a little hard to set up and master but it's a great DAW as well. If you are a game developer, specifically solo game developer, managing your game ideas, game design documents and tasks is really essential. And for that, I have been using Notion for quite a long time. I have set up my whole game dev workflow and YouTube workflow over here in Notion. Notion is not open source but it's free and you can create as many pages and databases as you want with some limitation on file storage. Now at the end, let's talk about some programs that I use for making my YouTube videos. First one on the list is the video editor. When I was on Windows, I used Premiere Pro to edit my videos. I also tried DaVinci but uh, my toaster can't handle it really well. Then after moving to Linux, I used Canon Live to edit 2 or 3 of my videos but it was just not my type. Currently, I'm using Olive Editor to edit my videos. The last 10 or so videos are all edited in the Olive Editor. Olive is a pretty cool video editor. It's also free and open source and the best thing is, it has a kinda similar workflow to Premiere and I really enjoy working on it. Except when it crashes and it kinda crashed a lot. 
it's fine I guess. To record my screen I use OBS Studio which is a really great software and you might already know about it it's pretty famous. And to record voiceovers for my videos I use Audacity and lastly for designing my video thumbnails I use Inkscape yeah. And I guess that's all the tools that I use. I'll be leaving the links of all the programs that I mentioned in the description of this video. So check them out if you want to. And one last thing, we recently hit 500 subscribers which is pretty cool. And uh, well, thanks for all of your support. I am really happy. Keep supporting and I'll continue to make videos like this. So thanks again. I'll see you in another cool video. Bye bye.